True Crime Streets of LA is an open world third person shooter game released in 2003. In True Crime Streets of LA, you play as Nick Kang, an LAPD detective on the hunt for the truth about his father's disappearance. True Crime has you fight, sneak, and race your way through a giant recreation of the city of Los Angeles to solve this mystery. At first glance, it might just look like another Grand Theft Auto clone, but there's so much more to this game than that. With its interesting mechanics, gigantic open world gameplay, and at times, ridiculous story, True Crime definitely stands out among other open world games released around this time. What's my father have to do with any of this? You're testing my patience, man. Testing? <laughs> yes, I've saved the best test for last. I decided to start speedrunning True Crime Streets of LA in 2017 because it was one of my favorite games when I was growing up, and also because of the interesting sequence breaks and the game's open-ended routing potential. Not long after I started running the game, I rose to the top of the leaderboards, beating the old world record set by Softman25 six years ago. In September 2017, I got a personal best in True Crime that would prove to be unbeatable for a very long time, 40-34. Just over a minute off of my summer best, this run had extraordinarily good luck, as well as the best strats that were known at the time. While I initially thought that the 4034 would be easily beatable, I was quickly proven wrong. In every attempt that I did to try and beat my time, each run would always end in disaster. In most cases, I would get really unlucky and die on one of the few boss fights, or get really bad car RNG. Either way, weeks, and then months went by without the record being beaten. At this point, I believe that the world record was unbeatable. I thought that it would take a ridiculous amount of luck or insane levels of skill to beat it. Eventually, the seemingly never-ending stream of resets really started getting to me. The workload of my first year of college was quickly picking up steam, and I started becoming more interested in other speed games, so I sort of lost interest at some point. I wasn't really happy with the condition of the game back then, and it was also rare for new players to start running the game, so I pretty much assumed that the world record would stand forever, or at least that's what I thought. This is the story of how I was finally able to beat the world record in True Crime Streets of LA. When I returned to the game in February of 2019, I knew that major changes to the route were necessary in order to improve the record, so I did a little bit of strat hunting in one of the most unpredictable parts of the game, Tailing Chong's Limo. The second level in the third episode of the game, it was known to be one of the biggest run killers for the longest time. In this level, you're required to tail a limo down Sunset Boulevard to its destination. However, unless you get pretty lucky, what happens most of the time is that the limo will turn onto one of the side roads or even stop at a red light. Having either of those things happen can lose a ridiculous amount of time. The worst part is, having to restart this level can lose over a minute each time you have to do it again. Needless to say, this level made the run have a lot more RNG than necessary. So I try to find a way to get rid of this extra unnecessary layer of difficulty. And I did. At some point I realized that by pointing the camera behind you while you're driving a car, other cars don't spawn in front of you in traffic, meaning that if you had the camera turned behind you while driving, you could theoretically drive forever without bumping into a single car in front of you. I later found out that this was actually discovered a long time ago, but me figuring this out leads me to a big discovery. I realized that the limo doesn't actually stop for red lights. However, it does stop for other cars that stop at red lights. So by doing the entire level with the camera facing behind me, not a single car spawns in front of me, and therefore, no car spawn in front of the limo as well. See where I'm going? So what does the limo do without any cars in front of it? Well, it just goes fast, straight toward its destination, only very rarely turning onto one of the side streets. We don't really know how the limo's AI works, but all we know is that it's much more likely to drive straight to its destination without any cars in front of it. And that's good for us. After some more testing, I found out that this new camera strat was actually pretty consistent and a bit faster than the old way, so I decided to implement this into my route. One of the biggest obstacles in the any percent category was made really quick and consistent. 
But that wasn't enough. Sure, we had found a consistent way to do one of the most random parts of the run, but there was another big problem in my way. The long, unskippable driving levels. In the any percent poor ending category, there are two exceptionally long driving levels. Strip Club Detour at the beginning of Episode 4, and the Airport Lead at the beginning of Episode 5. There isn't really too much to these levels in the run. The goal in these levels is to just get from point A to point B by car as quickly as you can. If you get lucky, you can stop and grab a fast car along the way, which will usually save a decent amount of time, but there's still a lot of driving you have to do. In my old world record of 4034, it took me 2 minutes and 25 seconds to complete Strip Club Detour, and 2 minutes and 33 seconds to complete the airport lead. But I was lucky enough to get a fast car at the start of the airport lead, which saved me quite a lot of time. But even if you can sometimes get lucky and find a fast car, most of the time, you don't. Which means that more often than not, you'll be spending a lot of time doing nothing but driving. I knew that if I was going to make this game faster, I would have to think outside the box. So a little fun fact about this game from Wikipedia. True Crime Streets of LA features a 240 square mile recreation of a large part of Los Angeles, including most of Beverly Hills and Santa Monica, with most street names, landmarks, and highways reproduced accurately. I mean, you can clearly see all the street addresses at the top of the screen in-game as you're driving. Sure, most of the buildings you see are just random shops or houses and aren't really accurate to real life LA, but the roads are. And that got me thinking. What if I just use Google Maps to route this game? I mean, think about it. Google Maps is a pretty great tool. Sometimes, really late at night, I just find myself randomly exploring towns all across the world, seeing all the streets and neighborhoods and buildings and stuff. It's pretty interesting, uh, to me at least. Obviously, I also use it for directions sometimes, but really most of the time it's just exploring. But enough of that. If all of the streets in the game are nearly identical to the real world, then can't you just plug your starting location and destination into Google Maps and find out the quickest way to get there? Yes. Yes, you can. So that's what I did. And wow, did this change true crime speedrunning forever. Let's take a closer look. Alright, so let's start with the airport lead. This level starts at Kincardin Exit and Robertson Boulevard and ends on Airport Avenue. For the sake of simplicity when it comes to timing, I just put in Bundy Drive and Airport Avenue for the destination. In the old route, I would take this weird way and head straight on to Kincardin Avenue, turn on South Canfield Avenue, then follow National Boulevard all the way up and over down onto Bundy Drive where I would turn onto Airport Avenue. Immediately, Google Maps tells me to head a completely different direction. At first, it recommends that I take the freeway, but I timed that to be a few seconds slower, so I moved on to the next recommendation. Instead of taking National Boulevard the entire way, it tells me to take Venice Boulevard there, but that looks so out of the way, I didn't even bother timing it. Then, it recommended that I take Palms Boulevard all the way over, then take a right on South Sentinella Avenue, then turn on Airport Avenue. In a test run, I timed the National Boulevard route to be 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Then I timed the route with Palms Boulevard, and sure enough, it took me 2 minutes and 19 seconds, an immediate 20 second improvement. One important thing to know is that this was timed with a fast car. In a real run, you'll more than likely be using a slower car, but that means that in most cases the time you save will be even greater. Now, I know that all of these street names might be a little hard to follow, so all you need to know is that National Boulevard was slow and Palms Boulevard was fast. I decided to do the same thing again, except this time on Strip Club Detour. This level starts on Vermont Avenue and ends along Hollywood Boulevard. Normally, we would take Vermont Avenue all the way up and then turn on Hollywood Boulevard. However, as soon as I put the addresses into Google Maps, it immediately tells me to just take the freeway there. There's even an on-ramp right behind where you start the level. I have no idea how I never thought of this sooner, but I timed the new route to be 18 seconds faster than the old route. And once again, this was timed with a fast car. One weird thing about Strip Club Detour is that even if you have a fast car when you start the level, it always forces you to drive your starter car, meaning that this new route potentially saves upwards of 30 to 40 seconds, and can go even faster if you're lucky enough to get a fast car at the start of the level. So with the help of Google Maps, we made two of the longest and dullest driving sections in the game a whole lot quicker. But even after all that, we still needed something more to make this record beatable. It was after all of this that I realized there was yet another thing I could change. 
During the third level of the game, Driving for Chow, we take a little detour on the way to the Chinese restaurant and stop by a shooting range to unlock the aim assistance upgrade. The reason for doing this is to be able to get quick headshot kills during a few levels. For example, we use the upgrade to quickly kill the boss and the accomplice. We also use it to kill the snipers at the end of episodes 2 and 4. It also lets us blow up our car quicker in chasing assassins. However, after doing a little bit of timing, I realized that going out of the way to unlock the upgrade was really slow. It usually takes about a minute to unlock the upgrade, however, it only saves about 30 seconds, so I decided to take it out of the route. After adding in subsplits and implementing all of these new strats, my sum of best went down from 39.19 to 33 minutes and 54 seconds, an improvement of over 5 minutes. True crime speed potential had risen to new levels. So at this point, all of the pieces were finally in place for the world record to be beaten. We took out a large, unnecessary detour, nearly completely removed the element of RNG from one of the most unpredictable parts of the game, and used Google Maps to cut back on the time spent in driving. At this point, any run could be a world record, so I decided that it was finally time to start grinding for the world record again. And finally, after two days of attempts, this run happened. I love this game. I really do, I love it too much almost. On February 26th, 2019, 542 days after the previous world record, I achieved the first ever sub 40 minute any percent time in true crime, clocking in at 39 minutes and 26 seconds. This run definitely had its ups and downs. Over a minute of time save on the Lola fight, along with 45 seconds on the airport lead, and finally two deaths on going up. However, with the help of a few large golds during the run, along with a well executed final boss fight, this run was able to beat the old world record, one that was thought to be nearly impossible to beat, by a minute and 7 seconds. Only two days later, I beat the world record again, finishing at 38 minutes and 45 seconds, 40 seconds faster than my previous time. In less than a week of doing runs again, I was able to improve the world record by nearly 2 minutes after not getting a personal best for over a year and a half. 
With 38 being a reality, this game's time was brought lower than anyone ever thought it could be. But this game's story doesn't end here. So what now for true crime? With the current route, it looks like 36 might be possible in this game. 35 is a big maybe, but perhaps with a few more discoveries, that could become a reality someday. Who knows how far this game will go? Only time will tell. And that's going to wrap up the video. If you're interested in learning more about this game, or maybe even running it yourself, you can join the True Crime Speedrunning Discord by clicking on the link in the description. We have a nice little community, and we're always looking for new runners. In the next few days, I'm going to be making a tutorial for True Crime Streets of LA, which will be on this channel, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see it. And also, be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comment section what you thought of this video. This was my first time making a speedrunning video on YouTube like this, so please let me know if you want to see more speedrunning content like this. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching.